مكان نيك اي اختيني يوهان كنلتشيش كنلتشيش it's been i think 10 days since i seen you all or something and so uh you know that there was a lot going on or, or maybe it was just a week i don't know uh but anyways we we had a week with uh without classes so it's great to see everybody um I think uh, we'll start with any questions or things you want to share, thoughts? Come see my play. Oh, it's yes. Yeah, go see Frank's play. Uh, it's fabulous. It's really neat to see what people can do through Zoom these days. And there's a uh, Lots of clinket in it. It's great to see clinket on the stage. Uh, I got a surprise for you folks. Uh, it'll take me a little while to share it, but I found my script from the Macbeth play that we did in clinket. So I'm gonna <sighs> scan it. Uh, it has all my notes, probably a bunch of stuff that was 2007. So there's probably a bunch of stuff I was wrong on, but I was interpreting for, I was kind of retranslating because I was teaching the actors uh, what the clinket was because it, it, it changed the script quite a bit from English. So it should be fun. We'll take a look. But yeah, see uh, Frank's play is through Perseverance Theater. I think it's this weekend is the last chance. So check it out. You could stream it from the comfort of your own home. Uh, I think there's a discount code for, you, for students. It's all capital schools. Um, and I don't know, that might have just been for the um, matinee today, but I think it still probably holds up. So use ptalaska.org slash SOTV and uh, do the discount code SCHOOLS, I think, all caps. And Vera, her play is coming up, A Clinket Christmas Carol, and that, and that one will have Clinket in it as well, quite a bit. And uh, Perseverance Cedar has this nice feature where you can kind of subscribe and then you can watch whatever you want for for free and it's not that much more than like netflix or anything so you're supporting local arts you're supporting uh, indigenous arts and so they they have made uh some great commitments uh ishmael hope and i we met with their staff and administration years ago and we said what's going on you, you can't just do plays written by non-natives about natives you gotta find some natives writing plays and, and i do think they stepped up so yeah let me find the link and then i'll put it in the put in the chat our study group for thing it also have a question when you have a chance okay yeah so i just put the link to uh perseverance theater there and so the the first things you'll see are upcoming events and you can see Spirit of the Valley is uh, the play that Kosh uh, wrote. And then uh, A Clinket Christmas Carol is after that. And the very top of the page, you have links for get tickets. So you could just buy tickets for one show or you could become a member of Perseverance everywhere. And uh, you know, if you can, it's great because places like theaters, they're just trying to figure out how they can, they're always kind of scraping by just because the, the arts don't always get the support that they need. But I, I think that place has transformed. And, and we, when we met with them, we said, we want a, this to be a place where, um, where indigenous people feel like this, this is their place as well. And so they, I think they've, they've really responded well. Oh yeah, a pug. We come up with a name for a pug. It's like a smooshed face or something. What are we gonna call? Oh, I guess yet the daily. There we go. It's a baggy face. That'd be a good name. Yet the daily cake. It's kind of fun to say. Yet the daily cake. What about daily? Oh yeah, clay. Wait, clay, clay, clay. Yet the. What did I say? Yad the tasty? Yad the tasty. Yeah. Yad yad the tasty cake. There it is. Not tasty. Tasty is like to watch over something. Tasty is baggy or uh, limp. 
Don't censor me, Google. I just. <laughs> I guess they're scanning my videos. Okay, uh, let's see. What other questions you folks got out there? Things you want to share? Well, I'm going to try to share my um my little like two minute thing. So I've... this is if it's okay. Um. So keep in mind, I teach three and four year olds, so it's very very basic. Uh, let me see. I'm not really familiar with how to share. I'm going to try. So tell me if you can see that. Yep. Okay. Tell me if you can hear. Kunk's yes that kunk. can hear it. Dominique's book about fall. Tasa yatin. What do you see? Kunk, kunk. Tasa yatin. Dominic, Dominic. What do you see? Saguat Kayani Hatin. I see a brown leaf. Kunk, Kunk, Dasa Iatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Kek Hatin. I see berries. Kunk, Kunk, Dasa Iatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Oak hotin. I see coho salmon. Kunk, kunk. Dasa yatin. Dominic, Dominic. What do you see? Pagan hotin. I see the sun. Kunk, kunk. Dasa yatin. Dominic, Dominic. What do you see? I see a bear trail. I wasn't sure about that one. Okay. Kunk, kunk. Dasa iatin. Dominic, Dominic. What do you see? Kutia khatin. I see a totem pole. Kunk, kunk. Dasa iatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? In Chei Khatin, I see a rose. Kunk, Kunk, Dasayatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Ik Khatin, I see the beach. Kunk, Kunk, Dasayatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Got Khatin, I see a clam. Kunk, Kunk, Dasayatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Sustani Khatin, I see a spruce cone. Kunk, kunk, dasa iatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Tik khatin, I see ice. Kunk, kunk, dasa iatin. Dominic, Dominic, what do you see? Late aka sha shaki khatin. This one too. I see snow on the mountain. Yes, yan beya shunashkin. Fall is coming to an end. Hooch oa. That is all. The end. Kunach chish. Yuck a. Kach kunach yuck a. Now, kunach chish. That's great. That's great to see. Uh, wonderful pattern building. Uh, good visuals, uh, really fun. Um, de depending on the goal, you might consider just dropping the English at some point, maybe, but that's totally up to you. It just sort of depends on 
like if they get it a couple times, they, it might just sort of start clicking over, but that's, mm -hmm. that's a philosophical thing. Um, as far as the notes for the finget, um, I don't think it's incorrect to say things like sakwat um, hoots uh, or I can't remember, there was a brown something. Mm -hmm. But some, some of the speakers, they, they really like us to say yach yeti because um, it, it could end up becoming confusing because some it could be interpreted like if you said kayani, that could be blue jay's plant like it, it mm. owns it. Um, and so I'll put this one in the chat with a couple of blanks so it's going to be blank um, yuck yati blank and then the first blank is going to be um, the color and then the second blank is going to be the noun. So this, we're gonna have cake, white dog. kuhida, mm. yellow pencil. So that is, is good to put in there. It makes it a stretch longer. Uh, that's the first thing for, I think for kids, it's okay. But okay. when you see the sun, it's probably going to be chwasatin because there's only one of them. Oh. So this is where we start thinking about shingit. Like chatin is just, I see one of those. Like I, mm -hmm. chatin, I see a dog. I see my dog. Mm -hmm. So that chwasatin means it's a specific thing, uh, which is why you say things like, like, uh, and then uh, let's see. For the bear trail, mm -hmm. uh, I think you had day yik hoots, so that would be a bear in a trail or on the trail. Oh, well, that could have been the case. We, we were going to walk through that trail, but there was a bear sighting that day, so we didn't. So that's fine. And then hoots dei, so that you put the noun after. So like now that's that's a, a bear trail. Okay. And then uh, the other one, uh, so day yik um, blank would be something in the road. Okay. Right. Um, and, and like, yeah, either one would work. It just depends on what, what you're trying to say. Uh, the beach one is niche because you niche when you're on the beach and you eek when you're up in the land and then you yun if you're out at sea. So the, the beach is an interesting one because which one you use depends on where you're at. Oh, okay. Because the boy's on the beach, it should be niche. But you can only niche on the niche, which is kind of fun. <laughs> um, I have explained to Hune that uh, I am genetically and academically trained as a proofreader. So star, the page about ice, I think you spelled katin differently than you did on the other pages. Oh, good catch. Thank you. <laughs> I, was, I was just missing an A. Good, yeah. Yeah, good catch. Um, so sunny, probably it needs to be just a little bit uh, so it's a little bit um, the high tone uh, is on the first vowel, I think. Let me let me double check that. Uh, oh, where's it at? Yeah, it's uh, ani. And then, glait sha sha ki khatin, right? So that's. Yeah, I had trouble with that. I um I was trying to figure it out in the verb book, and then I must have recorded myself like six times on that, and I just could not get it until I like broke it apart. So, yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah, because we want that k to be on there, because in our mm -hmm. mind it's on. It's got to be on. Uh huh. I kept saying ka, like every time I did it. So I had to like 
totally slow it down and break it apart. And, and Ka would be right for like uh, on the um, on the on a car, on the house, on me, on the garden. But when it's you when you get into like a mountain top, that's getting that's a whole place itself. So then you would just switch to the and that suffix will do it. Okay. So you can say sha shaki. That you could do it either way. I'd probably say sha shaki which I guess I wrote it kind of backwards in the chat. And then uh, yende is is one word. That was it. I think it was. Uh, coming to an end uh-huh so okay yeah excellent work very good good sheesh thank you i want i want to try to share that next week so i was i'm glad for all the feedback thank you yeah okay okay this is where i really hope everybody's at so you're crafting some projects and bringing things for us to talk about because I, I think a lot of you you just right at that spot where you're you're putting the language together in your mind and it's just this negotiation between what your mind already knows in English and then what it's learning in Tlingit. And it's fun stuff. Okay, were there other questions out there? Yeah, our language study group uh, were actually wanting to ask you a question in regards to um, referring to a Nachain or a date or, um, you know, a chill cat weaving in general. Um, if we were to refer to that as a yach ji dusne, we were trying to break that down. Yach ji dusne? Yach ji dusne. And where did you see that at? I'll, sh I'll share this one with you. Oh, wrong one. Hold on. It's wrong one. <laughs> Shoot. Wow, oh, here comes that Dekina. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let me go back to where it is. See right here? We're yeah. talking about Sigeti Kadate, also known as Yakji Dusne. Yeah. Okay, so the Dusne part is a weaving. Mm -hmm. Is that somebody weaving? Yeah, like somebody is weaving. Um, is, is the G like ye jene, but it's all together uh, G du sne, that person working on a weaving? I, I wouldn't expect yach ji, yach ji du sne. I wonder, huh. I'll have to take a look at that and see. Um, it might be something we also see in the Emmons book that maybe Nora took a look at as well. So I, I'm thinking the Dusne is its own word. And then there's there's something with, hmm. Because a lot of times when yach or yun pops up right before a verb, it means that that verb has been completed. So for example, I could say chwacha, I ate. But if I say yach that means I ate all of it. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you two different things, right? Because you might say, I'm gonna go get a slice of pizza and I'll say yach I ate it all, right? Or if you said, do you want a slice of pizza? I'd say de I already ate. Um, so yeah, I'll have to take, and, and it could be, G just as in like, because it, it has those downturn sort of syllables, which usually means it's kind of long and low. But I think at that particular time, they weren't hearing the difference between uh, short and long. So they might be just marking it low. But there's no like D, J, I, there's a J. And so G, yach, G, dusne is probably what it is. And then um, it's sort of like it was woven it right into a person's hands is how I think of it. Mm, and that's something Miss Clock was saying, actually. Mm. She was breaking it down with the resources that you have up on your site. No, you can. And, and uh, she, you actually had mentioned that, huh? 
about the hand. Can you show him what you have for the, how you broke it down? Okay, sure. If you feel comfortable with that. Ah, uh, I could try. Okay. Uh, this is our vocab list from that card. And we wrote yach ji du sine. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at, for it. Um, here, there were so many verbs that end in ne, mm -hmm. and so we we did spot that yun could sometimes turn to yuch, but we didn't know really. Like down here, it says yuch. Um, <coughs> the closest we found for that was like this list in the dictionary that has let's see if I can anyway it said like going towards shore yeah yeah well so yun is the shore but if yun or yuch or yunde pop up right before the verb like in the chat we saw that one yunde um it means it's it's coming to completion, or yun means to completion. So that's why you say yun gei wune, like uh, are you complete? Are you completely ready? Is basically what it's saying. Uh, and so yun chosene would be like if if I had a job to do, like you told me to go set the table, and then I could come back in and say yun chosene, I finished it, I fixed it up, and so. Um, that's probably, I mean, that's what I would guess this, and yun and yach are seemingly interchangeable at the beginning of a verb. Um, I haven't quite figured that one out. And so that's what I would think. And then I would guess you'd have jidusne. And so you're right with the pronoun there being a fourth person. Okay. But we're gonna learn some there's always new sets of rules with Klingit. And if, if you like rules and logic, then Klingit's for you. Um, <laughs> because you can't go do se, it has to go do ze. Um, and, and we'll learn some of the sort of trickiness that goes on with that. Uh, but it's because of that du pronoun. Um, and so what you have is ze. So we also know a classifier like the S classifier, you can have se and sa. Right? So the letter I in that classifier is usually signaling that we're talking about the verb happening. But the verb can happen and not be in a completed kind of a state. So this is where like there's layers and layers of logic totally embedded in the Tlingit language. And that's, it's that way in any language. Um, so you have si and sa, but when you add to the letter D to that classifier, you now have z and s. So it must go to that, just that letter S. That's the classifier. There's no vowel in that classifier. And that's, that's the one that's gonna get a little tricky. Uh, when we start looking at it, uh, I say like, there's that S and that's the um, snake's favorite classifier. And then you'll have one that's just a SH and that's the librarian's favorite classifier. Uh, but we'll start looking at how those things function. And, and the classifier is gonna be one of these things that we're gonna just start spending a little bit more time with at the beginning level. And even early in the intermediate class, we'll usually just sort of say, there it is. Sometimes we'll talk about what it does, but I just need you to know it's there. Then as we start getting further, then we start really examining what it does. It's a logical mechanism. This classifier is gonna be something that's in uh, not Dene languages. So Navajo has a classifier, Gwich'in has a classifier. And it's gonna come right before the verb root. That's awesome. Mm. Okay. <laughs> For uh, just on a, uh, the way he had used it on another way is, so it seemed that the Sageri Kadate was rescued from a total destruction to be Yakji Dusane upon another land. 
Mm. Interesting. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So yeah, that that's. I'm guessing that's. Um, I'll sh I'll show you another place where we can look. Let me see. So the other thing we can do as we start to sort of encounter some of these things, we say, okay, now that looks like a verb to me. That just looks like a verb. It's got this sne, do sne, and it just it just looks like a verb. Then once you see yach, you say, okay, that should come before the verb. And then you see the j. That could be g, but it could be just j that gets attached to the noun itself, like ye jene, work. So when we start sort of um, investigating, we'll go to the Clinkett Verb Dictionary. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll go to the Clinkett section, we'll go to the letter N, and we're gonna scroll down and we'll see nay. And there's, there's a bunch of them, right? So we have, uh, and then there's, we're looking for some clues. So if we say, okay, we think there's a j attached to it and that gets put right on the front of a noun. Um, so we have ka, ya. And, and so the way that, that they mark this stuff in 1970 or whenever this can, I think 74. So the last thing you're gonna see is gonna be the verb root. And um, so you're gonna have ne. And uh, what they didn't fully do at this point is sort of separate them because sometimes you'll have multiple verb, there's just multiple verb roots. There could be different ones that they both say nay, but they're just, they're homonyms, right? So one of, I think that's how it works for this one. One of them is weaving, one of them is carrying things, and one of them is for something to happen or for somebody to do something. So you have kasane, and there's, there's weaving. Right, and this is the type of weaving you would do for a chilkat blanket. So because it's slinget, it's just got categories. So you say, how do you say weaving? You say, oh, are we weaving yarns or are we weaving barks? Because those are the two main types. And this is the yarn one. So this could be crocheting, uh, weaving a, a blanket. It could be mending a net. It could be a, any of those things, it could be this one. Then we see to restrain or restrict. So this one has, oh, so the, the next thing to the immediate left of the root is gonna be the classifier. So nowadays we would write this just as letter S. This has that zero symbol, zero symbol, zero, S, zero, zero. To the left of that, you're gonna have what we, we call this a thematic prefix. It's basically a noun that gets attached to the verb. So that same ka that's on is pretty much this one, okay? Ya is that vertical, you know, so you gotta, but in, in a verb, they're more like a, a horizontal surface and then a vertical surface. As a noun, it's on and the face of, right? So like the word ta is a board like a board of, of wood. Ta ka, board on, is the floor. Ta ya, board face, is the wall. Okay, so and so you're gonna start seeing these things. And so we're just trying to decode thing it so you start seeing the same things all over the place. So here's the ka, that's a vertical surface. Here's ya, it's a horizontal surface. What do you guys think this one is? Around something? Around, around, around or about. So you're gonna see that one just built right into a verb. What about this one? My brain goes straight to working, but I know that doesn't, <laughs> that may not be it. Well, yeah, because we know jene, we know the verb jene, but this j usually has to do with the hands. So it's the end just kind of falls off. Oh, so that's right. Jin and G are different but related things. Jin is actually a hand um, or a dog's front paw. And then uh, G is possession. But in the noun, J is usually hand, right? And so uh, Sh is the end of something. 
Uh, and then we'll see, we'll see a bunch more. Here's Sha. Anybody know what Sha might be? Head. Head, right? So all these things can be built in. And so we see this to nod the head, right? So uh, it's, it's really fun when we start sort of untangling the logic of the language. And sometimes you can have a couple of these, right? So going here, if you see jidusne, it's probably this one to make somebody work, which is really interesting. If you said the verb was yach jidusne, that means it makes somebody finish the job. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> That's one of the other. <laughs> Gosh. Which, you know, it's, it's interesting, right? Because then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and so maybe that's, there's something to do with that. And so. Um, that was actually one of the other ones we were talking about uh, making somebody, wasn't that also that uh, Juliana? Um, I forget, I'll have to look at the list again. Here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it, so like, you just start looking for clues and then you go into the dictionary and, and you see if you can kind of untangle it. Because I think we've seen ne as like an N with the high tone E and then there was the N-E-I. And the N-E with the high tone was the one that you're talking about the working, making someone well, do something. So when, when you have, uh, let's go back to here. So what we'll do is, um, Let's just go, let's go look at work. So we could see some examples of these verbs because in the Clinkit section, they don't have any examples. You gotta go back to the English section. So we'll go down to work, um, W-O-R-K. So here's work, but we're gonna, look, we're gonna look for just examples of verbs. Here, this one's a verb, uh, uh, it's a really fun verb. It means uh, you're ambitious or you're hardworking. It literally means you're bony, which I think is really fun in Tlingit. I don't, I don't know what the, what the logic is, right? But, uh, cause if you, you could also say, ha, <laughs> this fish is really bony, right? But I don't know. Uh, and so that's a verb that has been turned into uh, an adjective. You can do that. Right, so shitzak. So that one's long and low. We're talking about these vowels. Look at these vowels. Chakak ye jenenuch. So this ne is now long and high. And if we go down, hastuch ayach yan ye jehuane. There's the verb, right? So this, all this stuff is not a verb. There's the verb. But there is some stuff we might recognize. Has to, there, plural, there, belongs to them. Ayach, is a mouth. Yach is like it. So when you say ayach, verb, you're saying, I verbed just like they told me to. Okay. Here's yan, just like that yach that we saw. That means when you say yan ye jehwane, I finished the job. I finished working on it. So jehwane, this one is long and high. And we're just gonna go uh ha e ye jududzine. They made us work hard. Kesh ade ha ye jikisine ye. You can't make me work. That one's a fun one. Um, but now it's gone long and low. So the vowel in the verb, in the verb, this, so this thing we call a verb root, the verb root, we're talking about the meaning. Nay means to do or for to happen. It could be any, either of those. When we talk about the stem, that's saying, what is the vowel doing? And you've got three options, short and high, long and high, long and low. And for the most part, it's predictable. 
but that that's that is and so if it doesn't make sense uh, we are going to start unpacking how the verb works you don't have to understand all of it at the same time uh, we are going to look at examples we're going to start talking about how this stuff works if you sat in an advanced clink it we do this stuff all the time just trying to figure out how to how to become good predictors of what that vowel is going to do Oh, ah. Any other questions, thoughts, things you want to share? Okay. So I thought we'd move back into our uh, talk uh, story. Uh, this was fun because I found this project uh, I had worked on years ago, but hadn't fully kind of finished it. And I, I think about the language differently than I did. Probably, I think I started this project in 2007. So as I went back in, I started, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing these things quite a bit different. So this story is called um, Ta'cha. Uh, it's fun because the Simshan have a very similar version of this story. This is the storyteller here. His name is Sha Dong. Uh, he's Kakwedi, uh, which is the people of Basket Bay. He's Dakwedi Yedi, so his father's people are Dakwedi. He's from uh, Angoon, but his people do come from Basket Bay. He was probably there when they were migrating out of Basket Bay. Maybe, maybe not quite. Uh, and then in English, his name is Robert Zuboff. Fabulous, fabulous storyteller. So he's born in 1893, uh, passed away in 1974. There are lots and lots of recordings from him. Uh, some of the funner things, when you learn Klingit, and we're not making fun of anybody, but he, he really spoke, you know, Klingit was his first language. So sometimes uh, when he speaks in English, he'd say things like um, octopus and, and things like that. You just catch them. And they're fun because when, when he speaks Klingit, it's very hard for us to understand. Uh, and so it's just really neat. I just really like to hear how the old people would speak English as they were learning it. Uh, tended to kind of like insert his own speculation uh, he was also uh, a, a devoted Christian, so sometimes he would throw these things in there about Christianity, uh, and, and I think that's fun. I think that's fun that those things don't have to be in competing spaces. Uh, going through this, so I, I sort of tease this out a little bit more so that we can, again, uh, read the, so we'll hear the sentence, then we'll read the sentence, We'll look for things that we know. We've been, we've been focusing on these things in orange, uh, these direction and location things. But what I started to do to pull this thing apart and show you how the language is working, uh, in gray, we'll have independent pronouns. Khat, wa'eh, huh, has, or wait, uhan, yuhan, has, right? And ka. So those are, uh, and then at. So those are pronouns that aren't usually attached to nouns. So like, here I am, there you are, where are you? Uh, it's me, what do you think? So th those types of things uh, are using basically independent pronouns. Then you have possessive pronouns, which are showing ownership or a relationship. So um, now we, ha we had khat wa eh Uhan, Yuhan, Hus. So now we're going to end Ka is the fourth person. So now um, uh, At is also one. So now when we get into the possessives, Ach, I, D, Ha, Yi, Hus, D, Ka, At. Okay. So that's the set of possessives. And we're going to mark those as green. These direction and location things, da, uh, de, dach, uh, gan, those types of things. And so we're just gonna 
because there's these lists of them and you sort of start learning these lists by start seeing them, I think, in action, right? And you'll start seeing them all over the place. There's an object pronoun. So this is the one that the verb is happening to. Uh, and so we'll, we haven't touched on those a whole lot, but I'm just gonna, we'll start by just showing them to you. And then as you start learning more and more about verbs, we're just gonna sort of look at these lists of them. Um, as far as like the pronouns, there's, there's only so many of them. I think Thinget has probably more than English uh, and every language takes care of its pronouns in different ways. Uh, but the objects are the ones that the verb happens to. Uh, so this is the whom in English. This is me, you, uh, them, a singular them, uh, us, uh, you all, and then them, a plural them. Uh, there's also fourth person pronouns here, people and something. Then uh, there's these things that are called conjugation prefix. We haven't done a whole lot with that yet, but uh, basically like when you use English, you might use an ing on a verb or an ed or something like that. So walking, walked, walks. So uh, each of those has a suffix on there. That's what English does. Clinkit uses a similar type of thing, but it's all kind of, it's towards the front of the verb. And we're gonna talk about there's just these things you have to do to put the verb into a certain, we call it a mode. Uh, in English, it's usually called tense, but in English, we, we, or in Clinkit, we tend to call it a mode. Then there's gonna be the subject. So that's the one who does the verb. So this is I, you, uh, they, uh, singular they, and then we, y'all, and a plural they. And then here you, all, you can have people. You can't have something in this one, but you can have people. And that was the de. So that de was a subject pronoun. Then we're gonna mark the verb root. So this is our starting point to start to sort of, we're just, we've been sort of waiting in the language. We had our feet in the water and now we're just gonna walk to the bottom of the lake, but slowly, right, slowly. And just looking, we've got the English to help us uh, we got the voice of um, uh, Sha Da. Uh, we're going to kind of just move a little bit quickly through the first parts. So I'm not going to ask you to read it. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you because we've already done these ones. It was probably 10 days ago. Um, but so this one, if we click here. Oh, hold on. I don't think I shared the audio. Huh? But do ask questions if you have them. So if I click this twice, uh, it should play. So uh, eventually there'll be a version of this that's kind of interactive so that you can sort of click it on your own and stuff. Uh, because another thing you could do with this since it chunks it up into kind of individual parts is you can repeat after the speaker and just try to talk exactly like the speaker, just try and sound exactly like them because there's so much of the pace and the tone and the rhythm that it's important to catch. So then when we see it written, this is what it looks like. All right, so that's what we just heard. guide you to sagen. Uh, and then we, we can sort of start to pull that apart. So the orange is where we're seeing some of these directional things. Um, and here we've got two of them put together, yik and t. And then we have a possessive, so that's mine, ach yagu. And then guide you do sagen. So there is a subject. There's the verb root. And we're just starting to see how these things function, right? Okay. And then, oh, here's a second. Some of them, they stretch across, right? Um, and it's fun, right? Because 
even though he's he's a fairly uh, deliberate and slow Clinkett speaker compared to some, but there are some times where, he, especially when he gets kind of to an exciting part of the story where he'll, he'll start speaking kind of fast. And so it's helpful to sort of see what it would look like if we wrote it. So here's what we're seeing. Uh, so a couple of things. Typically, and I think this is a rule that's been sliding a little bit on us, um, in classic Shingit, but this is not a right or wrong type of thing, this would be yay if you're going to say the name afterwards. If you're going to say the name right here, then it would switch to you. Shadach, you had to a sock. Ye had to a sock. Shadach. That's what the ye and the you difference is in this phrase right here. But I do think that's something that's gotten a little bit just slippery over the years a little bit switching, like some people say yay, some people say you. It's probably become a bit of a dialect thing as well. Then if we took a look at that, so here's the weh part that's there. Chet, there's an object pronoun. I'm the one that this is happening to. Du is people are doing it. Uh, and then here's nach, through or along, and da residing or at rest around so here's this, aweh, yeah. And so whenever you're writing down what somebody says, uh, there's sort of two general ways to go about it. One is you sort of write down exactly what they said. Uh, then the other way is you go through and maybe clean it up a little bit, right? Like if you listen to somebody give a speech in English, and then if they wrote that speech, there might be certain things that just get dropped. Right, because you might have someone said, and then, uh, and then I went over there. So you might say it twice, but if you were to write it down, you would cut one of those and then. And so here, I'd probably say, if you wanted to rewrite this, you can say awe ya achsa yinach, just just because there was a repetition there, and it happens all the time. But it just depends on what your purpose is in writing the thinget. Right. So if you're writing it for uh, yeah, that's not a, a real big decision. The bigger decision is usually in how do you translate this stuff? Because uh, as you move into this sort of look, uh, you'll see that is this, this, my name through, that is, that is, they summoned me, um, Geet Wayne. And so in terms of, well, how do you move this over to English? And what the Downhowers like to do was to make it just sound good. Like, this sounds really good to us in Tlingit. We want it to sound really good to us in English. So that means there's a lot of switching of word order and sometimes filling in some of the blanks. Uh, and so, but that's kind of, if you end up becoming a translator, that's up to you. Are you translating for non-speakers or are you translating for the speaking and learning community? And there's, there's a few different things that are going to influence you there. So here's weh and ya and ya and weh and weh. So that one is just all over the place. A weh is probably by far the most common word in Tlingit. And lots of, it doesn't even mean anything. It just, it's a placeholder. If we need to separate two different concepts, if someone just needs to think for a second, if they need to say, I want to talk, or I'm still talking, um, it's, it's just a, something that makes it sound, sound good. 
Uh, ach mai, sa is a name, sa yi is the possessed form. Um, nach, through my name. And then here's chat wuchuch. So we see the chat again, so it's happening to me. And then there's a third person who's doing it. This is Geet Wayne. So this is another interesting thing with Shinget is it does not mark ever a third person subject. It never ever does that. And what does that mean? That means if we did that in English, I would say, I do it, you do it, does it. I wouldn't say she, he, or they, there would just be nothing there. And that is something to just keep in mind. Because a lot of times people want to put do, or they just want something to be there because they know somebody's doing it. But in Tlingit, you just, it's just totally unmarked. And then we have chagu ai. Uh, so there's an independent pronoun, the one. Chagu uh, ai is the one of long ago, or the ones, right? This is kind of a fun pronoun. Uh, it means one or ones, part of them. Uh, so like going back to that example, I could say, Chwacha, I ate it. Yach chwasacha, I ate it all. I could also say, Ah Chwacha. I ate some of it. And that is telling you that there should be some there, right? And then chak wu na. So then here it is. We have these kind of invisible pronouns, which is really interesting uh, for a lot of these things. Like if there's no subject, like this is the verb literally for somebody to die. Um, and there's different ways that we talk about dying in Tlingit. It's usually pretty indirect, a lot like English, um, although sometimes we'll be just pretty matter of fact about it. Everybody okay? Any questions? Why does, why does the first chak have a suffix? Yeah, yeah. So uh, chak is long ago or for a long time, but this chak. This is changing it into a bit of an adjective. So the one of long ago, or like a, and so um, like you could say, uh, now it becomes a dog of long ago. So if it's popping up before a noun, it'll often switch to this. Uh, I have a question. Am I wrong or is Wu Nei? Another word. Wu ne is uh, for something to happen. So, oh, that wu right there, mm -hmm. that's just one of those prefixes that, that. Uh... Yes. So the wu is going to be either it happened or some third person we're talking about did it. Wu gut, wu ne. Uh, and so it, it's what we're going to get, it depends on the classifier, uh, but you're going to have basically, uh, and so what I like to do at this level is just start to pull things apart, right? Just think it has lots of things that smash together. And so I'll just say, let's take those things apart so we see what's there. And this marker right here, which on its own, we write as this Y with the two dots and the letter U. This is what we call a perfective marker. Perfective means not quite past tense, but similar. Once we put that marker in there, what we're saying is let's talk about this verb in terms of whether or not it has happened. So now you get into wugut, wuke, uh, and then you, you will have other combinations like Khwasaku, uh, Yisatin. And, and so this that's what this one is. So yeah, start, you're just gonna start looking for those because at the at the bare minimum, a verb must always have a root. And it must have a classifier, but sometimes that classifier can turn in, invisible. 
but usually a verb is gonna have these two parts, the prefix and the stem. And we're just gonna learn a bunch of patterns. We're gonna learn how to spot them, and we're learn how to interpret them, and we're learn how to put them together. Because when I see that not part, I think of here, clan, and now death. Yeah, yeah. So uh, na is, that's a different, and so same thing with English. Like if I say the word bow, and maybe I've asked, maybe I've asked you all this, what am I saying when I say the word bow in English? You're, you're either talking about like something you tie together or possibly uh, a, a, a tool used with an arrow. Oh, on. no, I was talking about my cousin bow. Okay. Right. And so gotcha. context, context gives us this. It doesn't, it doesn't really confuse us in English because it's usually there's context there. And so Clinkit has these as well. So there's gonna be, there's another verb root for na, it did na. Oh, uh, right. Drinking. <laughs> there's another na, which is uh, to apply some sort of lotion or ointment. That one's usually you see it as nays. And then there's this one, which is to die. Uh, and then there's a noun, na, which is the clan or the group or the tribe. And so it's a similar, just like when, when people learn English, they just, they just learn how to do this stuff. Is it there, there, or there? And, and you know which one it is by listening to it. But then some, if there's some words, like if you just said it, you'd have to hear more of the context. Let's see, Kutish. Ah, okay, okay. Let's do a couple more, then we'll take our break. So uh, here's this. Uh, so in this case, uh, yis is new or fresh or young. Yiduk. Uh, is a term for like a stage of growth. So this is a, a young man who's uh, probably like they, to talk about these days, this is probably a teenager. Uh, they're probably still at home, but they are probably capable of making other humans if, you know, if we didn't keep our eye on them, right? And so same with shot. So you have these sort of things, it's sort of, they're, they're just markers, right? Just like in English, the teenager, you're, you're kind of marking, you're not so much marking years as you are marking a stage of life, right? And that's what yaduk is. And then siti, so this is similar to like that dekakan changes to khwasitin, just like this, yati is to be, siti is to be a member of a group. You're one of these things. So I was, I am a young man is what this translates to. And there's the chat, right? So we just keep like, how do people talk? They, he's talking about himself, right? And this is how he's getting into this story. He's like, yeah, let me tell you about my name. He called me over. This is what I'm called. This is what people call me. This is what I am, you know? And it's interesting because this literally translates to me. And so we just see how pronouns work different in different languages. So you would say, young man, me, be, right? And that, that's kind of like the literal word order just to start thinking, we don't wanna translate it like that because then we sound like a, the classic Hollywood Indian, uh, but we do wanna sort of look at it. So structurally we see that that is how the language works. So when we look at this one, kle uh, is something that you're just going to get a feel for. It means then or at that time. Then ch, uh, this is a little particle which usually grabs on to something. In this case, 
Just at that time, from when I was a young man, right? And so like, that's kind of how all those pieces are working. And so he, what he's saying is like, just as soon as I became a young man, as soon as I became, you know, and this yaduk, that's like 13 years old, 14, when, whenever you start getting, as they say, um, they had to come up with a term for it in, in Hawaiian, because they've got the term for like the, the stage of life, but they had to come up with a term basically for puberty. And so I think they had two choices. One was the end of the peach fuzz and the other was the beginning of the wiry hair. And so, but that, that's what you're talking about, right? And so, and that helps us in this context because what he's telling us is like, ever since I was probably about 13, I've had a boat. And, and so that's, that's and, and if you know some people from, especially from some of the villages, it's, you'll see a 13 year old out on a boat and that, that's pretty wild, right? Because that's not something you typically see like, you know, like in Juno, I don't, I don't know if you see that too much. Um, and then Sina Yak is a light boat is what it literally is, but that's a gas powered boat. Ach G, my possession, Ye Wu T, it was there, right? So this is the be verb as well, to be. But if you put some kind of directional thing right in front of it, especially to be located there, sometimes with the sometimes with nothing, that means to be at that place. I had 1906 model. So, there I speak in English. And fun, because like uh, a lot of the old speak, they just like to throw little English terms in there, right? You could say this whole thing in Tlingit, uh, but they, they really like to move between the languages a lot, I think, which is fun because we we find ourselves there as well. They were way over on the Tlingit side, not very much on the English side. We're way over on the English side, not very much on the Tlingit side. And we're just trying to get to the middle, right? So here's that tle again, then. Shugunach uh, is one word, but we see the nach on there. Right, we start to recognize these things. And that means in the beginning. Come out, Yanastini is this is that city verb again. Right. So we saw Yati become Wuti. Here we've got City becoming Yanastin. And we're going to learn a bunch of these patterns, right? To learn how to spot these things. Uh, so it's it's at that point where it's just coming out. It's fun. Okay, maybe we'll take our break there. Uh, five, six, let's take, uh, I don't know, let's come back in about six or seven minutes and we'll pick this back up and we'll see if you folks have any questions. Cheesh. Mr. Chairman, um, so I, I totally agree in our meeting last night for the finance, you know, we have a lot of things that we need to take into great consideration on how to
Okay, folks, uh, any thoughts or questions? I saw someone had in the chat something about, um, if you go to Instagram, we collaborated on a, a little GIF, like a little animated thing that you can insert into things. And uh, it might be the first one made in Tlingit, and I don't know if it's the best one, but it, it says Nana'i. So Nana'i is, is not a very nice thing to say. It's said in teasing a lot. Uh, a loose translation might be uh, death for you or death you, however you want to sort of interpret that. So Wisabu uh, Na, and so Nana is usually is the term for, for death. Um, and then nana e, and so the e part is the you, right? And sometimes you'll say nana e na, and um, that's really piling it on. Clan war starts, fist fights kick up. You know, it's it's it can be a pretty serious thing, but uh, it, I mostly hear it in teasing. Uh, but sometimes it could be literally talking about like, why don't you go die? And so just. Uh, be cautious, uh, but also like that is part of the language, right? You get, can't just learn all the nice stuff. Well, yeah, I guess I guess I said the, I wasn't okay. That works, <laughs> but I, I seen the hand gesture that goes with that, and I've seen it said in anger before when I was younger. Yeah, so that that one is uh, stick it right on up there. <laughs> yeah. You fill in the rest. No sense to me, Google, <laughs> but <laughs> it took. And so, yeah, I guess coming along these lines is um, there is an elder who told me a story and said uh, she married a guy who's a French Canadian. And uh, I guess one time they got in a real argument and they have this O sound, right? We talked about this O to the O sound. And so they, they're really getting in this argument. And she said to him, it took. Uh, and then, so he says, he yells at her, a hole you. And then, uh, you know, and he's, he's French, it was his first language. So it was really interesting because like Klingit and Tagish were her first languages. And, uh, and she says, Where, where'd you learn that? And he says, your mom, I asked your mom, what's the, what's the thing she's gonna yell at me when she's mad? <laughs> and so that was pretty fun. <laughs> I guess I guess I should hold back when something reminds me of something else. Well, a lot of us we heard these things. We heard them sometimes in jest, and then, and then sometimes in, they'll they'll be serious. And they are things to be careful with. Uh, like whenever we learn some of these things, um, and there's a whole there's. I usually learn them from uncles, uh, and then yeah, some aunties as well. But you know. It would be a lot of times when uh, a lot of folks have left the room and stuff, but and so it wouldn't be something we would say in public. Uh, every language has fun and sometimes uh, pretty nasty things to say, uh, and some of that nastiness could be in the form of like insult or just meanness, and so we want to be careful with all that stuff. Uh, but also, it is a function of it, so you might hear it and then. Uh, you just gotta be ready for if you do, and you might need to say it sometime, huh? A lot of stuff happens. Okay, any other thoughts, questions? I, no, nah, it's, never mind. <laughs> I guess we'll have to have clink it after dark, right? So well, it's kind of after dark now, but let's get back to the story. So here uh, we have Awe We Dech Achjik Siti We Yak Tlenk. So there's a couple of things. So coming back to these ideas like things that sound the same, but are two different things. Uh, these are both suffixes and but they are different ones, even though they sound the same. The first one is to be located somewhere, to be at, and the second one is plural. They just sound the same. 
Okay, and it's not a problem, right? We, we know whether we're saying lances or lances. There's two lances or it's lances cup, right? We just, we just figured it out. English does the same thing. It's not unusual. Uh, so here, when we look at this one, deich to achjik siti. This is a different siti than the other one. So here's another thing, right? This one is what we call a handling verb. So clinket has a bunch of these, which is to carry something, to move it, to hand it to someone. So when you say, hand me the thing, this is for what we call a complex object. Hand me the phone. That's what it should be. Uh, hand me the belt. It means, it just means you, you got to carry it in a certain way, right? And so we'll get to some of those carrying verbs, but related to the carrying verbs is for something to just be somewhere, right? And so in this case, this is what we've got. It was, it was, there's two in my possession. And then he specifies what they are. So there's another thing that just like pay attention to the word order, right? So this is just sort of a way, it's just a timing thing really. To my, like the number two, my possession at li laying there, those boat bigs, bigs, right? And so that's the word order. So basically I had, I got two of them, those big boats. Yahuche aye a wahit chit jit chwasete. He says so, it's pretty, he's like, ahit jit chwasete. Like it just really smushes together. This is where I think it gets challenging. It's like, what am I hearing? And, and the more, and that's why we spend quite a bit of time teasing this stuff apart, building these lists of things, because you will get to a point where you'll hear that and you'll just, you'll just know. So, but to get you to that point where you know, sometimes we got to just sort of pull it apart a little bit, slow it down, look at what all these pieces are. Because he, he is, a, sometimes he's kind of a fast talker, but for the most part, he's a pretty slow paced talker because he, he used to go tell stories all the time uh, in the schools to people. Um, and then he knew that we were going to be working on these. So hoochie ai, so hooch is a fun word uh, on its own. Uh, what does hooch mean? Like over or end? Yeah, over and gone. Right? So, uh, and it depends on the context, right? So uh, if you got up and you went to the pizza box, but I had just eaten the last piece, I might say, uh, it's, all, it's all done. Now, I've only seen this once. Somebody was up giving a talk and then somebody else said, and you know, that don't do that unless you know you have the full authority to do that. Because you're saying it's done. And so you're trying to tell them to wrap it up, but just be careful. Those are two elderly people. I, I saw it and I was like, whoo, but they're same clan, you know, so. Uh, in some cases it could also mean uh, they died, right? So you tell them some story like the, the boat went down and it hit this big rock. And, and so it depends on what comes next. But I'm saying like, it's done, it's gone. And it could be the person or it could be the boat itself. And then in this case, when you say the last of them, the last one. And it depends on the context, right? So in this case, he's saying the last boat. So this ah, we're seeing as well popping up quite a bit. Right, to, just to be used, like the last one, that one, my thing. Ach yeet, my son, 
jeet. So there, there's an important sort of thing to look at here because a lot of times we want to say like ah, yeet, do, jeet. And that second part, that do, is not necessary. Ah, yeet, jeet. So basically, my son's possession. The jeet is used for a lot of these things for like gave it to somebody. Thank you for giving me the time. Chosati, uh, that same verb that we just saw earlier. This means I carried a complex object, but in this case, like gave it to somebody. It doesn't mean you literally carried it around. So this, there's that kla again, then. So I gave it to him and then he broke it. That's uh, they broke it. And the uh is the object there. There's the ka, that's vertical, that horizontal surface thing. So again, he says this one pretty fast. We a yikt at nach a kuchji at a kunach. So here's, uh, oh, that one should be green. It's really on green. So ah uh, is its. Uh, and so, you know, like if we look at this, the difference between Tlingit and English, that, its, in, at, uh, around, uh, this one, I'm always going around, the one, really. So we, we kind of put that together and it's the one I used to really go around in. Um, so he knew what my name was, and then he said this to me. So here's Achsai again. Asku, that's a verb. We usually hear it as like ausaku or khwasaku. Uh, this is a verb which means um, to say a specific thing to somebody. So here's the khat, like there's me again. So they said to me, or I could say, I said to them. Uh, so this one, we're going to kind of jump a little faster here so we can get to the part where we left off. Um, I would like to explain to you this name of yours. Uh, so here's I want. Uh, uh, to explain to you uh, your name. Uh, we're going to skip where he reads it just so we can sort of, we'll, we'll get caught up to where we were. Uh, we were always, we were repeatedly at the interior. That's where we were. Uh, our life was really difficult there. Uh, so this one you could say, my life is really difficult. You know, so there's different ways that you can use this stuff as we start to sort of look into how, like how can we take this stuff and make it into something we can say and want to say. 
Then he starts talking about the fish. Yachat, this salmon. Yachat, kadach hachekechakch. Yachat, from the salt water, uh, to it swims up to our mouths. The salmon, right? And so there's a bunch of stuff with the mouth, like. Um, we talked about this a day and like there's not even a verb that's always on there right and it means um for somebody to eat but it could also be like the way they said it, it kind of depends on what we're talking about this salmon was really something else it was really delicious just continuing to sort of, we emphasize things and he says it a little bit differently. So this one is literally like, it is really difficult life in the interior. What ich isayu cha awuch ischa and kini. It was how difficult it was. So we see the wasa. It's not really being used as a question. Um, people, so the eating each other, the people of the village. That's, that's an actual name of a village, isn't it? What's that? He's actually talking about that's the name of the village, isn't he? Well, Antkini is the that's the village of that's the villagers. Mm, I, okay, I saw something with the Dhaka village that talked about the people eating each other. The oh, name of it. oh, really? Okay, yeah. So you would expect like Uwasa or Duasak or something like that if you're talking about the what it's called. Kusakakon <laughs> Kudziti. Uh, so here we are, um, we talked about that. It's like people. So this is the object. Um, oh, I should make that color. Was I making an object? Purple. So here we have eating people, and we have Kwan, which is really interesting, like the, the people of eating people. So this is the same verb root, yati, to be, siti, to be one of these things, kudziti, to exist. And kudziti is where kusti comes from. And kusti is where hakusti comes from. They're all related to the same. So one verb root, can have a whole bunch of different verbs that are all built off of that one verb root. And this root at its core means to be. And then weigao is usually like that time. Uh, uh, so ada about it. And so Clinkit does lots of this things. It just keeps referencing back to this thing. So things just switch to it quite commonly. Uh, we are always conversing. From the salt water. This verb means to migrate. And there's different ways to talk about moving or migrating somewhere. There's three main verbs for it. Um, this one, which is wushagaz, and at the verb root is a house post. So it's really cool. It's like we're gonna just we're either gonna take the house post or we're gonna go put a new one in somewhere. So that's kind of permanent. But usually when we're talking about it and think it. When you're saying we weren't really sure where we were going, but we knew we were going to live somewhere else. And that's what this one means. There's another one, which is, um, you could say, which would be, 
And that verb root means to pick up a bunch of stick-like things and move them because it refers to taking the planks off of the clan house and go bringing them somewhere to build a fish camp, but you're gonna come back. So that thing means to like go somewhere for a little while, but we'll be back, usually seasonally. Then there's yausaduk. And then that one is also more like, um, where I think wuchgas is just like, okay, well, we're, you guys stay here, we'll go over there. We're gonna go find some new place or something. It's not a really traumatic, there's no bad breakup. Sometimes with yausaduk, it's sort of like, Nana'i, we're out of here, right? And so it's something, it's, there's different ways to talk about this stuff. It's kind of up to the clans, but um, it's good to know the differences. So again, we're conversing about it. And then, just what we talk about. So he, he's, again, he's repeating himself. And what this repetition is doing is saying, this stuff is really important. We all, we just keep talking about it. We talk about it, we talk about it. Okay. Uh, this might be pretty close to where we left off. So I think what I'd like to do, uh, since I've been doing most of the talking, uh, we'll listen to it. And then we'll get someone who can volunteer to read it and just tell us what kinds of things you recognize in the Shinget. So we'll change gears a little bit. Um, there are 15 of us, so we should all take a turn reading. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, take a tea. Yeah. Ya family, I has to Hakan Ati, Aya, Yakuna Kane. Ya Ya take a tea, Aya, Ya family, Aya has to Hakan Ati, Aya, Yakuna Kane. Who would like to read it? I'll read it. Ah, Ya take a tea, Aya. Ya family aya has to kakan adi kakan adi aya ya kuna kain. Hey, cheesh. And what kinds of things do you, so we're kind of looking for these directional things, but then also just like, what do you recognize in there? Hmm. The one, yeah, the, hmm. I don't know, not a lot. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, uh, okay. A kuna cane, and it could be like um, very, uh, or we vary with ya there. No, actually, no, never mind. Okay, no worries, no worries. When, when you see the ya, and then when we look at the front of the verb and we see na, that means it's something that's happening right now, like ya na gut, ya na squeen. Um, so you, you'll see these na, it's usually like, it's, it's in the process of happening right now. So again, we're, we're sort of spotting some of these patterns and then the patterns will get us to usually the verb root. Um, as far as like storytelling, it means there's one, it like literally like that, that's kind of what it means. Like you could say, like he, he has one eye, right? Or he, he, he she has, one ear. But when you just say it's kind of saying like one time. So an, another thing that storytellers will use is they'll say or once. 
And, and those are just storytelling devices, right? So uh, here he is like doing this whole big opening. I had this boat, uh, I used to fish. We, we were in the interior, it was hard. And so he's doing all this stuff to set up the story. This signals that he has begun telling the story. So now he's switched gears from like, I'm done with my setup, let's get into the story. Then we see, aya, aya, aya. So we, we can kind of almost ignore those because they're just sort of pattern setting. Uh, this is, so there's, hastu is there. Uh, so that, those people. is a mouth. Khan is next to. Adi is a thing. So this thing next to their mouth, which is just kind of a fancy way of saying food. And so sometimes clink, it just gets so fancy. Another way that it does it, it'll say, so is something they could eat. So it just does this sometimes. So you could say You could have said that, but sometimes storytelling calls for a little bit of fancy. So in this case, hastu and then ya literally means it's jumping along. So when we put all that together, it's like they were running out of food. So here's the T for the verb, that's yati. Uh, there's the ya, achan, ati, kanakain. But this is not everyday language. There, there's other ways to say this. So what we see with storytellers and this is why uh, it's useful to use these stories because they're interesting, they're fun. We want to learn how to tell them. But sometimes it's sort of like someone comes to learn English and we're like, okay, let's start with Shakespeare, right? And so like, because you do fancy things once you start telling stories. It's like, people don't usually say it that way, but because it's a story and probably for this, and, and this is something that Richard Downhauer used to like to talk about. I was like, when the storyteller begins telling the story, they got to fancy their language up a little bit just to get us, it just sets the mood, I guess. Here's the next one. Can I get a reader? Okay, I'll try it. Oh, I uh, I I gotta fix this. There should be a high tone right there. Okay, any anything you recognize in there? Um Um, but I'm trying to think. I recognize it. The aya, but um, I'm not. No. Okay. No worries. No worries. So, play uh, nach means one person. So this is this is kind of fun for Klinget. So we know play dech nask dagun kajin. That's counting to 10. But if you're going to count people, you put nach on the end of it. Klei nach, one person. Dach nach, two people. Naski nach, dachuni nach, kejini nach, klei dushu nach, dach dushu nach, naska dushu nach, gushuk nach, jinkat nach. All, all the way up. So you just throw this nach on there to just say, we're counting people. Uh, another thing that you could put on the end is dahin, and that means the number of times. Klei uh, dahin, once. Dach dahin, twice. And same, and now it follows that same pattern. Yet another one is ka. K 
تلقى one at a time تلقى in pairs نسقى so it, it's fun to sort of learn these categories but تلقى has a special meaning because it does mean one person but it also means alone and so sometimes it's important to know that stuff because someone could be all alone and lonely or it could be like they wanted to be by themselves. So in this case, and then we have this yati. What this I is doing is it's kind of turning it into a noun. So tlay nach yati a, this one who was by his or herself. That it sort of smushes together. And so when we just learned to spot this yati, oh, like, Oh, we're talking about somebody being something, they're being something, right? And then awachun means they went, they were hunting. So when you put it together, one of them went hunting. And you could also say, then this, this person, one of them, went hunting by himself. Can I get a reader? I'll, I'll try this one. Uga Jaki Atka. I really, this one confuses me, so that's why I want to do this one to try to give it a shot. <laughs> um, I, I can't, I, I can only think of a body of water um, and atka referring to, uh, it's gotta be some kind of action. So I can't imagine it being like an action of water of some type. Mm. Um, so it's just another one of those words that sounds like another one that I'm not aware of, but um Una, uh, was it una teach? Is that a word? Yena teach, I'm thinking. Yena teach, yeah. Okay, uga ja ki. And it's referring to a possessive, so a body of water of some type that so, belongs to somebody. Do you know what this, let me tell you, do you know what this one means? Awa jak. Awa jak. Is that like when you're cutting something, like uh, kachak? Oh, like no, no, but that's like stacking up wood. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, okay. Does anybody else know what our jack is? To explode? That's okay, what you took. But oh. you, guys, you guys know so much. It's good. We're, we're just sort of uh, matching up to other things. To kill. To kill, right? Our jack is to kill. And, and so um, this, this is how much the verb can change, which is really wild. So we could say, Jack, there's the command form. Kill it, right? Uh, it, maybe it's a mouse or something, you know. Um, we're not gonna, no one's gonna go murder anybody. Uh, but, and then we say, Awa Jack, uh, they killed it or them. And then we could say, Akkwajak, uh, they're going to kill them. And we could say uqajaq, or in this case, uqajaq. They might kill them. So this is a, a, an unusual form of the verb. And this is uqajaqiat, is something they might kill. And Clinkit does use this. I, I think I just mentioned um, uh, he went looking for something to eat. So the qa is you're going after something. And Clinkit, when it talks about the kills, it's usually talking about something that you're hunting, right? And, and and Clinkit does use patterns like this. Again, it's storytelling, so it's a little bit fancy. You probably wouldn't just say this on a day-to-day -day basis, although, you know, 
if you're going around looking for something to kill, I hope you're a hunter, right? But this is where the verbs, they get, they do get long, but you'll start to recognize like uqajak and uqaqa. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. Tessia Kuku de Ayaya Yad to get out there at the creek, we cock who was shit. Tessia Kuku de Ayaya Yad to get out there at the creek, we cock who was shit. I want to read this one. Oh, Gook, Elias. No, no, gook. <laughs> Sheesh. Things you recognize. Nice. Reminds me of not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They didn't go, or he or she didn't go here. Mm -hmm. Ya do ye na de. Ya is like happening right now. They're they're ye na de. Tef kasaka. Ah do kik. Um, ah is like the one and their their son. Do ira kua she. She reminds me of um like singing. Uh, of what? Singing. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, there's a she verb, which is singing. And then there's a she verb, which is to, to touch something or to feel it. And then when you get kuwa she, it's to look around for something. Like it literally is like you're feeling around for it. But when you say like ka kuwa she, this ka is going to attach to a noun. Uh, so you could say kahwe kakuashi. They're looking for coffee. Uh, so it could be they're looking for something. And in this case, du i ka. They're looking for them. Right? So I could say i i kakuashi. I I was looking for you. Right. And so there's there's some things that can change in both of these. And so that's what that part is doing. Um, yek. So we had talked about ik and nich and yan. So this is the beach, right? And so this is where, like, it's so interesting to keep coming back to this where, you know, John Martin, you say we're saltwater people. And that's true because the ocean is built into our grammar. So if you're up in the interior, which doesn't mean like all the way to Tesla, it just means you're away from the ocean, up on the land. You can go ik, which is to go towards the beach. And then you can go, uh, if you're out in the ocean, you could go yun. And then if you're on the beach, it's niche. And we talked about this at the beginning of class. Yek is also another way to say from the upland down to the beach. And this is really interesting, right? Because he went hunting and and good. He didn't come back from going up in the woods. So the, the, there's other ways to say like he didn't return. But in this case, it's like he didn't come back from going up into the woods for hunting. And it's almost like the village is just planted as this something that's on the ocean. Even if they were living in the interior, like Clinkets are still going to kind of think about it like that. It's going to be kind of embedded in the language. Uh, this one is just more like this. I guess that one should be orange as well. And this word, so here's du for there, a singular there. Yina. This one is a really tricky one to look at. So 
you might have heard the clan name Nanya Ayi, or you might have heard the group Sanya Kwan or Hanya Kwan. That Nya is built into a lot of things in Tlingit. And it kind of could mean a, a bunch of different things. It could mean just in their, in their vicinity, in that area. It could mean shielding someone, like the name Huna comes from Hunya. So this, it used to be Nya, but then it switched. It's either going to be Yina or Nya. And you're going to see it in a, and so it could mean shielding, protecting, blocking, in the way of, or just in that area. So in this case, do Yina day, in the context of this would be wherever they were, right? Like, so if someone says, I'm going to go hunting, I'm going to go up on that. And they'll usually tell you where they're going to go. So if I said, do Yina day, Wugu, they went wherever they were wherever they were. Uh, do you not they are, do Keek, um, his younger brother. So in this case, when he didn't come back down, his younger brother went to search for him. So he's hunting like up in a mountain or something. And what's really interesting is like all that stuff is built in here into the grammar. And, and so like, I think it's very fun because it codes so much stuff all in this sort of short space. Okay, so Can I get a reader? Okay, and we get the double clash, so you know it's just that just happens. But um, what do you recognize in there? Clash uh, then who are you? Is that like he or she? Yeah. Um, also clash Um They didn't go towards the beach. Yeah, yeah. They, they and, and in this case, like since we've already set the stage like hunting and now once you said yekugud like and yeah they didn't come back to the beach um or in this case they didn't come back right so he didn't come back down either and so when you see how uh nora and richard were translating this it's because like all this stuff is processing they were so fun to watch because he would be breaking it down like pretty linguistically and she would just she would just know how it worked and so they were they were a lot of fun and, and uh, if you never had to take it, if you never had the opportunity to take a class with them, um, they, they were so much fun because they knew so much. They liked to laugh, so s smart, and they would argue with each because they were married. So sometimes they'd be like these exasperated sighs, like Dick Down Howard just like break something down. Like, hey, break this whole thing down for us. Draw all this stuff and show us how it works. And then Nora would say, that's not what it means though. <laughs> and he would just get like so frustrated uh, because she's a birth speaker and a super gifted translator. And they were both so, so smart. Um, yeah, so he didn't come back either, right? And so when we see these patterns a second time, it sometimes gets easier to pack, unpack. Here's that independent pronoun, who, oh, uh, right? Oh, I think I got it the wrong color. What was that supposed to be? Gray. So I'm just building this as we go, so. Shade, I guess. Okay, gonna We'll do one more. I think we're running out of time. <laughs> Who's gonna be the last reader of the night? I will. Um <laughs> Yeah, Kiki, uh, Cheesh. Um, yeah, that's the beach, I think. And is Kiki related to Kik? 
Yep. So, I think this is like when the brother didn't come back to. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. Right. So, um, this L is a contraction of Kleich, and you'll see it. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes when we sort of switch from like, uh, it's not this way, or like the one that didn't come back, or it doesn't have this thing, it'll just switch to this L. And then there's a couple different common ways to say like, when this thing didn't happen, you know, and, and then I guess we probably gotta do the last sentence, even though we're technically out of time. Uh, and I saw the chat about projects. Um, we might have to hold it till Tuesday. So usually if, at the beginning of a class, it's a really good time to share any projects or questions or anything. Kiki-a is the younger one. So like if, if for example, you're talking about, um, if I was going to say, so I got three kids. The first one was a girl, second one was a girl, third one's a boy. So I could say, my oldest daughter, the younger daughter, and then right? And so that's how you can start talking about which child you're talking about. The middle children sort of, they get a little bit lost and unfortunately it happens, I think in every language, but um, you can still talk, you can say, if you had like three of them. So then you could say the second one, there's, there's ways to do that. Uh, so this one, well, I guess we're out of time. We'll, we'll pick it up here. Uh, and then, so there's no verb there. Um, and so if, as we look at sentences, when we sort of pull them apart, some of them don't have verbs. And, and the more we do think it, when we have a sentence with no verbs, we can usually get it really fast, right? So guash is maybe, maybe 10. Talk is winter, but it's also years, maybe 10 years and seven. So maybe 17. And then the next one he says, Maybe he was 18 years old. So he's, he's sort of telling us about how old uh, these young men were. And it's important in the story as they go up hunting by themselves and, and this, this thing that's gonna happen to them, which will sort of unfold. Uh, so on uh, Tuesday, we're gonna keep going through this story. Uh, for the beginning Clinkit workbook, uh, I think there's this chapter, Wasashti Danuk, which is, or no, uh, chapter six, which is called Adu Saweh, who is that? So we're going to look at that chapter. So if you uh, can spend some time studying that chapter six, uh, bring some projects, some sentences, some questions, and that's what we'll start class with. And then we'll keep moving through the store and sort of pulling things apart. And we're gonna start setting ourselves up for more talking about verbs and how they work and how we can keep thinking about them. And we're gonna look at lots of pictures, lots of examples. They are the most complicated part of Tlingit. Uh, there's certainly other complicated parts, but uh, we're gonna start shifting towards like just really looking at those things and how they work. Kulchish, wukecha. I wanted to ask if there somebody had corrected one of our classroom activities and had said that there was a, a high tone over the I in E-A-T. Um, I looked in the beginning Tlingit book and I, um, and I didn't see it that way. And I just wanted to know if there was any other reason that there would be a high tone over the I, like no. in a different way. 
the, the independent pronouns are the only ones that should have tone marks. So when it's independent, like it's me, it's you, it's us, Uhan, Owe, they all have a high tone in them, but okay. they're the only ones that have a tone mark in them. It, oh. it, it, but it could be from this, like sometimes when we're teaching pronouns and we're starting to switch them. So like I'd say, you're called this, I am called this. Sometimes I'll say, wasa iyeti, and, and we'll put this emphasis on there because we're trying to teach someone. And then like, I started noticing that because I was probably teaching it this way. I'd say, you had do a sop. And, and I was making it go high because I was trying to put emphasis on it. So that could, that could be it. Okay, okay. Not to change. Uh, 